And we're back with another video, another cheap hydroponic system from eBay. This one is so much better than the last one. Let's get started and show you what's in the box. And welcome back to another video that is me growing stuff in pots. There's the stuff, there's the pot, hoorah. This is a mini hydroponic system. I'm gonna hook it up to that one over there. Hopefully it will work. It was like $65 delivered, so it's a lot cheaper than the other one. I got the other one, which is that one there, the price wrong. It was actually $1.99 and I said $2.99. So Australian dollars, so that's like $10 US. So this is like a dollar US. Let's open the box. And I'm closer to the floor now. I have not actually looked in here. So this is the first time. Okay, it is different than the other one. It looks like there is a weird shaped hole. So maybe the little cups, well, they must be square. Uh, we got the same sort of stuff as the other one for growing seeds, like that sponge stuff, but this one doesn't look like it's 200 years old and diseased. Wow, we may even use that. Whole heap of fittings, which would cost more than $60, so that is a bonus already. End caps that you can't buy in the normal shops, so that is also awesome. Piece of tubing, woohoo, it's worth it for the tubing. I'm guessing this is a transformer for the pump, and I'm guessing you get a pump. That is a transformer for the pump. That there must be the pump. It is. Very cool little pumps. I think you can get solar powered ones of those, so I may get one of those in my next video. Whoa, okay, all the stuff fell out. Yes, the cups are square on these ones, which makes perfect sense because the holes are square. And that fits fine. Awesome. Okay, so that's pretty simple. We got four pipe things. We got end caps, we got bits and pieces. Okay, it's over 50 pieces, including the pump. So that is pretty cheap. And if the cheapest pumps are like $10, $20, that makes this super, super, super cheap. Yeah, that is pretty good. I think I might even get some more of these just for the fittings because these fittings are like $2, $3 to buy online. And that's the cheapest ones we can find in Australia. So yeah. Okay, so what we're gonna do with this is instead of, oh, and what it did come with as well is all these pipes here, and all these pipes actually, look at that, make a little tiny stand. I didn't even see those pipes in the box because they were inside those pipes, but you can make a stand with it. That's very cute. So what we're gonna do, instead of making a stand, is I'm gonna use those bits to join those pipes to those pipes, and we're gonna run it along our fence there. So we're gonna have water pumping up, going through two, Oh, focus, water running up, going through two, and then down here, going through two, and then back into our pool. If you haven't seen our pool in our other videos, there it is here. There is the swamp. There is my hydroponic strawberries. This is all solar powered. It is actually trickling away quite good at the moment because we have sun. Yeah, we haven't had a sunny day for about a week, so it's just been sort of half going. Yeah, so far, so good. So the whole idea, as I said, is maybe the water that pumps up to there, I'm gonna do a T-piece, run some water there, down into these, and then back into there. Because we do actually have quite a bit of water. There is a lot of flow. Look how much flow we've got. That strawberry might not make it, but I think I cut that one wrong. But all the other ones are going super well. Check that out, that's a strawberry. Check how much water we've got with the solar pump. That's pretty impressive. That one's also not gonna make it. There is actually a lot of water in full sun trickling through this. Yeah, so I might have used a pump that's a little bit too big, so I can quite easily connect a T-piece to that, run some more tubing up there, and have it trickle down there, and then back into our pool. That is where we are. We're gonna connect our pipes and see how we go. So surprisingly, this is a really good system. Everything connects perfectly together. There's practically no leaks. The only leak I've got is when I joined the pipe with another little bit of pipe and I haven't really glued the back of that. But everything else pushes into itself and there's no leaks. Wow. So obviously it's not designed 
for this type of configuration, but it works perfectly, perfectly fine, as you can see. Much better than like the little tiny trolley thing it's supposed to come on. But yeah, you can pretty much hook this up in any garden. I did, well, I didn't even bother using the bigger pump. I just put a little tea piece in there. I haven't even got a regulator on it and I've got the water pumping up into here and there is actually quite a bit of water. And the way that these pipes with their little end caps work is they're going to hold water in every pipe when it turns off as well, which is kind of perfect. Water is trickling perfectly down there, down there, down there, and then back into our pond. So I would definitely say it's a success. That is $65 worth of piping, and I maybe used half of the elbows, if that. So I've got a whole lot of bits left over. Yeah, I could have put those two down there. I could possibly even join the other system that I've got to this. But I don't know. Where do you, where do you stop with pipes everywhere? <laughs> But this is all not using any power up. It is one pump with the solar pump. Pretty sure it was about a thousand liter an hour pump or something like that. But solar panel up there, pumping water up, down, back into this, and then to there, but also into there, and then into there. I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna actually stick in these. Obviously they're too close together, but I could do every second one. Is like what 28 or 36 or something like that. Not entirely sure what we're going to use it for, but we're going to jump with stuff in it. Okay, I thought I'd do something stupid and try aquaponic snow peas. Yes, it is weird as it sounds. I don't know if it's going to work. I'm guessing if I just put some sort of trellis up or something, it's going to work. But these are the snow peas. I got given these for Christmas. I know, someone gave me snow pea seeds. I don't even like peas. But we're going to plant them and see what happens in this system. Yes, those are the peas. I'm going to put one in every thing. Obviously, I got too many peas for holes. Yes, a common occurrence that happens. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just going to dump the rest of the peas in this pot and see what works better of the ones in the pot or the ones in the hydroponics or slash aquaponics I should say. So I've jumped a couple of days, I think it's been about three days and they've actually started germinating. That is bizarre. Look at that. So apparently it takes seven to ten days to germinate but this has only happened in two days. This is where we are with the system. So it's only early, early morning. We just got a little bit of sun, so the system hasn't started pumping water up yet. But it's been working for a few days, as I said, and so far, so good. Enough for these to all start germinating. Hopefully, when they start getting the little sprouts, birds won't come or grasshoppers and wipe everything out. But it is getting into autumn here, and that's a good time where we are in the subtropics to actually grow these apparently according to the packet just going by the packet don't even like peas what I think I'm going to do because these can get like two meters high and this fence is like just over two meters I could probably put some sort of mesh over here and let them climb the mesh so I'm just going to wait till they all germinate and maybe get you know little runnery bits on it first to see how that goes but that is a super awesome system to buy so I'm not really going to put the link down in the description because one, I'm not sponsored by them. And two, I'm sure wherever you live in the world, there'll be different systems from different people, which will look sort of the same idea as this. So you just want to get something, this sort of system, and then hopefully you can join up all the bits and pieces. What I did notice though, is the size is different than your standard piping you can get from your yeah, hardware local places. So the little pipe that I had here to join these two pipes up is a standard size and it just fits perfectly. So you can get a standard size pipe to use as little shims to join it all up. So that is a good tip if you're trying to get bits and pieces and fittings and elbows that you need and you can't get the right size, just use the little joiny bits. And that's all I've done with that bit there going back into the pool as well. But that is where we are. So in the next few videos, I'll have an upgrade of the upgrade and update of this so you can see it growing and what have you strawberries going super awesome I did get rid of the ones that were dodgy 
So need another three strawberries now to replace those, but all the rest are going well. We're going to jump to the other system. And we have jumped to the other side. This is working awesomely. Look how much water. So if you haven't seen this before, these are my Beto boxes. It is solar as well. There are two solar panels up there, but I've only got one solar panel going because it was way, way too much water. We have a few drips still, but the problem was because I had so much water, it was just jetting out everywhere. So simple system. There is a big solar pump down the bottom there, pumping the water up this into these boxes, water trickles down into these. So if you haven't seen my video on it, there is a video, so go look at the last videos in the last month or so, and you'll see this getting all set up. Yeah, the only problem is I need a smaller pump. So I'm gonna replace this big pump with a smaller one. I was gonna swap it with the pump you just saw on the other system, but that one in full sun has more than enough water. So I think I'm gonna use this one for a bigger system again. Yes, you think I'm gonna run out of room? Nah, no time soon. So we're gonna do that on a bigger system, get a smaller pump for this, and then eventually I can get the roof sorted, more light for this, and we can finally get these things going. But that is a decent amount of water. Oh, every time I turn, move one of those. Uh oh, wow, did you see that? <laughs> okay, that is not good. So I need a better system than that. I just got sprayed with water. <laughs> Anyway, we will get back to this system, but while we are here and we're having a little break from the other system, we're gonna show you some new plants because we tend to get a lot of new plants. Finger limes. Okay, I went a little bit nuts with finger limes and I got a pink ice finger lime. What's that? Rainforest pearl? Oh, it's a dwarf finger lime. Hold on, if that's a dwarf finger lime, I think I got one that was a Tom Thumb or something. I'm pretty sure Tom Thumb is a dwarf finger lime as well. So I've gone from only, I think, two or three finger limes to multiple finger limes, like nine. I got some finger limes. Look at them. They look like grubs. They actually look like the caterpillars that were in the last couple of videos, don't they? <laughs> but these are rainforest plants. I do not live in the rainforest but I live close to where they live in the wild. So they have so far coped with the heat in the last few months. There's our sugar cane going well. But yeah, oh, I did get also, where is it? It's here somewhere, there it is. They have finger limes that don't have spikes. Now, I am not entirely sure, Mount what? Mount white lime. I'm not sure if this is a naturally occurring finger lime. What's it say? Finger lime from Cape York, good bush tucker, small dense bushy shrub with sausage like, yeah, yeah, low. suitable for making drinks. Mm -hmm, because that's all you can use limes for apparently. But yeah, has no spikes. Every other lime has got ridiculous amount of spikes, much like your normal, normal everyday lime trees have spikes. Or do they? You know, I'm pretty sure they do. What's that? It's a grapefruit. Okay, we're gonna find a lime and we're gonna look at see if it's got spikes. That's a lime, that's a Tahitian lime. There's a spike, ha ah, Okay, so normal limes have spikes. <laughs> Can you tell I'm new here? But these ones, your finger limes, have got ridiculously dangerous stabby spikes to them. But yeah, if you've never seen a finger lime before, try and track some of those down if you're not in Australia. If you're in Australia, you should be growing finger limes because they're kind of cool. Yeah, let's go back to the system. And we are in full sun. We have water trickling down all our systems, water trickling through our peas because, you know, we want water trickling through our peas. I can't believe that worked. That's kind of hilarious. <laughs> But there we go, we have this system trickling away. I'm gonna just take one of these out so you can see the water in there. That's a decent amount of flow. I think that pump was like 1500 liters an hour to give you an idea. So really you don't want one that big because that's a lot of water going through. I think a slow trickle would work a lot better. 
But yes, so far, thank you Frangipani for dropping uh, leaves everywhere. Gotta love Frangipanis. Mm. Loses all its leaves in autumn and winter. But if you did enjoy this video, click the thumbs up so I know. How cool is this system? I did laugh a couple of videos ago and say I'm just going to have pipes going all through my garden. And so far, it has started. Maybe we should just do pipes all down here. No, no. I might put a big tub down here maybe and do that. <sighs> Famous last words. Anyway, thank you very much for watching the video. We will see you in the next video. There's things to click on the screen in a bit. And we will see you then. Bye.